The NFL schedule is out. Uh, there's been some leaks, some rumblings. We're going to have all different aspects to the NFL schedule throughout the course of the show. We're going to sprinkle them in here sprinkle uh, over the next three hours. But how about the fact that Netflix just decides, you know what? $75 million a game on Christmas, that'll work. And so Netflix for $150 million on Christmas is going to get the Chiefs at the Steelers and the Ravens at the Texans, which is code for nice knowing you NBA and parts of your family because those are uh, prime matchups we're going to get. At barring health, everybody's healthy and ready to go and playing for all those teams. They've got some prime matchups for the low, low price of $75 million a game. Hmm. It's awesome. Huh. I mean, huh. Huh. <laughs> how do you make money on this stuff? <laughs> what do you I mean, mean? Seriously. <laughs> I mean, look, I think I think we can simplify this enough to say this. You pay seventy five million for one game, all right? You've got what do we say, three hours, three and a half hours, however you want to do it. Let, how about this? Let's give the entire week leading up to the game, okay? To advertise for it to, you know, try to figure out ways of generating re- revenue around it. I just, I, I don't know. I don't know how you make money off of that, paying 75 million. There was a time when, and, and I think Pro Football Talk and Mike Florio used to write about this, when ESPN would, would buy the wild card oh, games Florio. for like $25 million, And people would question how you make any money off that. I, I don't, I mean, it's, it's crazy. Look, obviously they're paying for it. Folks at Netflix are smarter than I am, so they're, they must be figuring some way of making this work. But it is crazy to me that there are, whether it's a streaming platform or networks out there, that are willing to spend this kind of money. And, and I don't know if it always means they end up becoming profitable from it. I'm, I'm not sure where this leads down the road, but it's just it's crazy. It's crazy to see how much the NFL is able to make for a singular game on Christmas. Like, compare that to the NBA. What do you think an NBA Christmas Day actually can generate as far as revenue or profit or oh. what even let's say you're auctioning that game off. Like best two teams. What is that gonna go for? Fifty bucks. <laughs> Damn. You know, like here, bag of now later. Yeah, like here's you know <laughs> We'll, we'll, a bag of Skittles. We're asking for fifty, but if you only got two twenties on you, that'll work. Um, yeah, that's fine. I just strawberry shortcake. Right. <laughs> I don't know. I, Cream sickle pop. And and I know the discussion becomes, you know, with all these streaming apps and places that you have to go to watch it, you know, it, it's pricey to be able to be an NFL fan. And some people have discussed that and, and kind of broken down. And we tried to break down the numbers last week, and I think we all got more confused by the numbers of different streaming apps and places like that. I just... I think the NFL knows they've got everybody by the balls at this point. And I just don't see a way that people are going to just push back and say, no, I'm sorry, I'm I'm just not interested in watching this anymore. Unless the product just gets worse and worse and worse and lacks such star power, which I just don't see happening anytime soon. Are there going to be in-game commercials like a regular network television game? And do they control that? Uh, yes, they control it one and two. Yes, I believe there's going to be. So I mean, they may I, feel like they already have enough advertisers to offset, you know, based off of what they were willing to pay. They got to know what they're willing to pay, right? What the threshold so, of what they're willing to pay. So I'll, I'll simply try to kind of break it down, right? If you have a broadcast partner, um, you're, you're basing a lot of your revenue off of advertising. A lot of people think that, well, yeah, you pay a subscription fee for your cable, but with broadcast, linear television, you can tune in and get a signal, right? So you, you can't necessarily bank on that. So let's just say, you know, if it's a, a Fox, a CBS, an ABC, any of those, and NBC, you know, there's a broadcast signal you can tune into, put the rabbit ears up, you can get that channel, right? So traditionally, you used to say, like, we can get X amount of dollars having so many windows for commercials that we've sold to, in order to make money on whatever this costs to pay for it, right? So with Netflix, it's different because they have subscribers. It's, it's kind of similar more to a cable model. Um, the only difference is, like, they're not being bundled in there. Like, it's, it's a direct-to-consumer. They know exactly what every single person is is doing that's uh, subscribing to their their uh, streaming app they know all all those things about you right 
So they're paying whatever monthly fee it is, and maybe it's with advertising, maybe it's not. Now, that's what's going to be interesting is I, I think if you're going to be a part of the live entertainment and games, the, even for people who have a subscription that's a higher-end uh, subscription where they don't watch uh, commercials, they're probably um, going to have to in this case just because that's part of the business model. So it, it's just it's a little different, but again – to, I, I think what a lot of a lot of streaming apps and, and people are doing is they're just like we want in on this. We may not make money at first, but once we get more, like we'll find a way to make money off this when it's all said and done. When we force people to come here and subscribe and and watch, you know, the the different uh, commercials and whatnot that come along with these live events. Yeah, I would just assume that there's so much data connected to what you're able to collect as as a streaming service that strategic ad insertions is such a big thing at this point you can almost predict out what it would cost like what each person or what each advertiser would need to pay per i don't know whatever it may be you know per mention whatever whatever the the deliverables would be you'd have to assume they package this thing up and they say here's what we can sell here's what we can make and based off of whatever it is they would look at being their profit margin, you'd have to assume that was why they were willing to pay what they were willing to pay. No, I just think they're trying to get in on it. Like, I, I really don't think they're going to make money off of it. There's just there's no it, way. It's not necessarily that they make money off of it per se, but they're definitely going to try to offset the, the hard expenses connected sure. to whatever it is that they're doing. Well, I, I think what happens, too, is if you think about when you have a live event like that, you can base, well, hey, we've got you know maybe a Jerry Jones 10-part docuseries, and we're going to get people who are going to want to watch that. What you're trying to do, if you're a streaming app, is you're, you're just trying to get people to stay there longer. It's like any app. It's like Instagram. You know, when you have someone who logs on Instagram, their entire job – at, at Instagram is to get you, or, or Meta in this case, is to get you to stay there. Because the longer you stay there, the more ads you see, the more they can track what you're doing and what your habits are. And that's the same thing with Netflix. Even though it's not the, the traditional app like we're talking about on your phone, in a sense, even though some of it's going to be watched on their phone, that's what they're trying to get from you. So it, it's, it's not so much about just, hey, this game, do we make money off this one singular game or these two games on Christmas? It's probably about everything else involved. But it's also showing the NFL, this is what we can do. This is the, the product that we can sell. And, and uh, once they get their foot in the door, it opens it up, I think, to allowing them to have more games, more access to being a bigger player in the future. You know, in a weird way, COVID ended up being a good thing for the NFL. <laughs> Great thing for Netflix. I mean, because I just think that, like, and they've talked about how, like, the UFC, the viewership for the UFC grew during COVID because it was one of the only events that was going, on. going on. Yeah. And the NFL was able to hold an entire season. There was no, they, they didn't miss any time. They had a Super Bowl. They had all that stuff. And I wonder if you just look back all these years later and go, there were certain businesses that thrived during all that or benefited from it. There were others that were shut down and it's terrible, but there were certain that are, that have thrived because of it. And I wonder how much long-term success that gave the NFL or revenue that gave the NFL, the fact that they were still able to put on in empty stadiums an entire season, and it's led it's to everything they've done here. It's crazy, man. So I have to think about that. They they went through an entire season where Nobody no in the one stands. was there. Yeah. Like, like, like make-believe cr uh, crowds in stands. And yet here we are. And if you would have said during COVID, Netflix is going to be paying $75 million a game for Christmas games, it'd be like, hold on a second. Can we just make sure nobody nobody like dies of COVID here? Can we make sure nothing happens here on the field? And just a, a couple a of... crucial pivot. I'll tell you that. It's crazy, man. To, to think that a, a streaming company that's going to take you know, the rights to stream old movies and documentaries and stuff like that, now they go live. Now you're starting to see them again replace i was i was trying to figure out why pay-per-view has been you know like for boxing like why did showtime go away you know why did pay-per-view and different things like that go away it's because these streaming platforms is is they're they're monopolizing i mean who would ever thought you're going to go from that streaming like, like if you think about it kaleidoscape was the first like that was like the first you know streaming deal where you uploaded your your dvd and you could go on to the 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 platform the the, the kaleidoscape and 
it was on demand for all of the DVDs that you 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 know uploaded to your really? system. Oh yeah, I don't even remember that. Yeah, <laughs> it, was like, it was the coolest thing. You go down, you download your your DVD, you can get rid of your DVD or you know whatever store it, whatever happens. You know they get scratched, they skip whatever. That was the first streaming. Like you're streaming, but you're streaming with the system in your home. Now it turns into you have streaming like, you know, YouTube, who would ever thought YouTube would turn into a place where you could see live live uh, action on things or see, you know, something other than just short form content being posted. It turns into like almost they're, they're their own TV stations now, yeah. like literally the T not even a station. They're, they're their own TV like they're a network. It's pretty crazy, man. It's pretty crazy because you can continue to pivot as long as you have the capabilities of being able to support what it is that you're doing technology-wise. You can continue to evolve into things that, you know, your mind can't even fathom where where, where it's all going. You know, what that fan experience could possibly be going through these these platforms. I think it's interesting because it's it's cutting edge, it's it's innovative, and and it's bringing it's furthering you know kind of this whole where is where is technology taking entertainment, and how does how does sports like a sport like football how does it how does it play a major part in in that pushing forward? So something intriguing to watch. I'll tell you that because one of the biggest things we were worrying about or thinking about with Prime was how how is that going to work. You know, how's how's the streaming, the lagging, all those things, how's it going to work? And, I mean, they got through it. There were a couple of hiccups, it seemed like, but they got through it. Well, and they're, they're still not reaching as big of an audience. I mean, that's that's been proven. Um, and, and the other issue is <clears throat> I, I think for for Netflix, what's, di- what's different is, <clears throat> excuse me, on Christmas Day, like, you know it's going to be a big game. Like, you know it's meaningful to the NFL. It's meaningful, obviously, to Netflix and everyone else who's watching. So the, the difference is when you, you know, sign up for a, a Thursday night football package is you're going to have some crap bad games. Like, let's be real. <laughs> <laughs> and no one's going to tell you that more than Al Michaels. <laughs> so it's just part of the deal. When you sign up for the entire season, one game a week, not every single one's going to be a banger. You know, it's like the old uh, albums back in the day. You know, we used to buy albums because pretty much every song used to be legit. Oh, well, yeah. as more things have spread to more prime time, more of a demand by broadcast partners and streaming uh, you know, platforms and networks, you know, now it's like, all right, a little bit different. Um, you know, you're not going to have quite as many quality matchups. This is a cornerstone to the NFL moving forward to squash out the NBA and to highlight their product on a holiday that the NBA used to try to covet. Now it's all changed. So it's smart in the sense of like, yes, they're overpaying for one singular game or two games, but they know they're going to get marquee matchups and an audience that could be one of the biggest of the entire season outside of, you know, maybe as we get to the playoffs, Super Bowl, you know, that sort of thing. But at least during the regular season, it should be a massive audience. That used to be the worst when a band would come out or a group would come out with just a banger of a hit. And you're like, man, I got to go get that album. And then you realize the other yeah. 11 songs sucked that's, ass. That's Thursday Night Football. Uh, it's, like, <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's like, damn, like, when's the single come out? What are we doing here? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's too bad. Uh, well, yeah. At least you could have a steak at halftime. Though, right? <laughs> <laughs> there is that.